Have you ever opened a bottle of nail polish remover and immediately noticed that sharp, distinct smell that almost burns your nose? That's acetone, a clear, colorless liquid that's surprisingly powerful for something so common. You'll find it in nail salons, paint shops, and laboratories all over the world. But have you ever wondered what it really is? Where it comes from? How it works? And why it's so useful in everything from beauty products to rocket fuel? Today, we're diving deep into the fascinating world of acetone, a simple compound that quietly powers industries, science, and even your everyday life. Let's explore right here on History of Simple Things. At its core, acetone is one of the simplest types of organic molecules known as ketones. Its chemical formula is C3H6O, which means it's made up of three carbon atoms, six hydrogen atoms, and one oxygen atom. That might not sound like much, but those atoms are arranged in a way that gives acetone some pretty remarkable properties. It's highly volatile, meaning it evaporates very quickly, and it's also a very effective solvent a liquid that can dissolve many other substances, including oils, fats, plastics, and even some synthetic materials. In fact, acetone is so good at dissolving things that it's one of the most widely used industrial solvents in the world. So where does acetone come from? Today, most of the world's acetone is produced synthetically through a process called the cumene process. This method was developed in the early 20th century and is still the standard way of producing acetone on a large scale. It starts with benzene and propylene, which are chemicals derived from petroleum. These are combined to create cumene, which is then oxidized to form cumene hydroperoxide. That compound is then broken down to produce both acetone and phenol, another important industrial chemical. So yes, that bottle of nail polish remover in your bathroom likely started its life as crude oil deep underground. But before we had modern chemistry and petroleum refineries, acetone was made in a much more natural and somewhat messier way. During World War I, the British actually produced acetone through a fermentation process using a bacterium called Clostridium acetobutylicum. This microbe could break down starches and sugars, like those found in corn or potatoes, and turn them into acetone, butanol, and ethanol. Believe it or not, this biological method was used to make explosives. Acetone was a crucial ingredient in manufacturing cordite a smokeless gunpowder used by the British military. One of the scientists leading this effort was none other than Chaim Weizmann, who later became the first president of Israel. His work in developing large-scale acetone production was a major contribution to the war effort. Now let's talk about what makes acetone so special. Chemically, acetone is polar, meaning one end of the molecule is slightly negative, while the other end is slightly positive. This allows it to mix easily with both water and many organic compounds, making it an incredibly versatile solvent. When you apply nail polish remover, the acetone breaks down the resins and polymers that make up the polish, allowing it to be wiped away easily. But the same principle applies in laboratories and manufacturing. Acetone is used to clean glassware, remove grease from metal surfaces, and even in the production of plastics like acrylics and polycarbonates. It's also a key ingredient in many cleaning products and paint thinners because it evaporates quickly without leaving residue behind. Interestingly, acetone isn't just an industrial chemical. It's something your own body produces naturally. Small amounts of acetone are formed when your body breaks down fat for energy, particularly when glucose levels are low. This happens, for instance, during fasting, low-carb diets, or in people with diabetes. 
In these cases, your body enters a state called ketosis, where fat is converted into ketone bodies, one of which is acetone. That's why people with untreated diabetes sometimes have a fruity odor on their breath. It's actually the smell of acetone being exhaled. Because acetone evaporates so easily, it's considered a volatile organic compound, or VOC. That means it can enter the atmosphere and contribute to air pollution if not handled properly. However, compared to many other organic solvents, acetone is relatively safe. It's not classified as a carcinogen, and it breaks down quickly in the environment. Still, it's highly flammable, and inhaling large amounts can cause dizziness or irritation. That's why proper ventilation is always recommended when using it, whether you're in a nail salon, a workshop, or a lab. One of acetone's underrated uses is in scientific research and medicine. It's often used to prepare samples for microscopic analysis because it can dehydrate tissues quickly without damaging them. In pharmaceutical manufacturing, acetone can be used as a solvent for synthesizing or purifying active ingredients. It even plays a role in forensic science. Acetone is used to dissolve certain substances for testing and to clean laboratory equipment in crime labs. And beyond science, acetone is a surprisingly common ingredient in everyday life. It's used in products like paint removers, adhesive thinners, and even in some plastics manufacturing. The clear panels you see in airplane windows or motorcycle helmets are often made from polymethyl methacrylate, a plastic that's created using acetone as a precursor. So, while it might seem like just a simple chemical, acetone is behind many materials that shape modern technology and design. In the end, acetone is a perfect example of how something simple can have an enormous impact. From fueling the war efforts of the early 1900s to helping clean delicate electronics today, its versatility has made it indispensable in both industry and science. And next time you open that little bottle of nail polish remover, take a moment to appreciate that you're holding a molecule with over a century of history and chemistry behind it. One that continues to dissolve, clean, and connect the modern world in ways we rarely think about. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.